As local as local news gets. News 12, The Bronx. Well, this hour, the health department's trying to find the source of an outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the South Bronx. Two people are dead. Nearly 30 others have been infected with the disease, which is a severe form of pneumonia. Now, since July 10th, there have been cases in Highbridge, Morrisania, Hunts Point, and Mott Haven. The health department is now testing water from cooling towers and other potential sources of the bacteria. Typically, the way Legionnaire's disease is spread is through uh, what's called uh, aerosol droplets. So Legionnaire's, the bacteria, lives in water. It's an aquatic organism. It thrives in warm water, and it thrives in many areas in an urban environment uh, during the summer. Symptoms include fever, cough, chills, and muscle ache. If you have any of these symptoms, you should seek medical attention as soon as possible. Legionnaires can be cured if treated quickly. As local as local news gets, News 12, The Bronx. Okay, as we promised, Dr. Edward Telzak, an infectious disease specialist from St. Barnabas Hospital, is joining us now to tell us the latest on this outbreak. Dr. Telzak, first of all, thank you so much for coming in and joining us. It's my pleasure. Listen, we've been talking about this all week. You know, you've been an infectious disease specialist for a very long time. You're actually treating five patients with Legionnaires at your hospital. When you hear about what's going on, when you hear these statistics, especially 46 cases, people here want to know, is this something to be worried about? Is this a systemic problem happening here? Well, I think mm -hmm. it's something to be concerned mm -hmm. about, certainly. Yeah. Uh, it's important to recognize, however, that Legionnaire's disease occurs all the time. That's right. And usually it occurs sporadically, but it occurs often enough such that when patients come to the hospital for pneumonia, mm -hmm. they routinely get antibiotics that would treat Legionnaire's disease. And we often don't diagnose it, but we assume it's one of the possibilities and so we use an antibiotic that would treat it. So you hear about this it could be treated by using an antibiotic but yet you hear that there was two deaths right here in the Bronx. How did it get that bad for these two patients? Why wasn't something done sooner if it could just be treated with antibiotics? Well, in general, mm -hmm. pneumonia in certain populations yeah. is always a serious illness, mm -hmm. and many patients get admitted to the hospital with That's pneumonia. That's very true. Uh, the patients, um, I'm familiar with one of the patients who passed away uh, with Legionella, mm -hmm. but re routinely the patients who get Legionnaire's disease, yeah. the patients who get complications, and the patients who die have an underlying immunocompromised condition. They may be chronic smokers, they're generally elderly, they might have underlying uh, lung disease, on cancer chemotherapy, on hemodialysis. They're generally not what we consider a normal host, mm -hmm. meaning they have um, innate problems with their immune system or their lung. All right, let's kind of erase the myths because I know there's a lot of myths going on around there and that's probably causing a lot of the concern. Is it contagious? Is it easily contagious? There is no evidence at all okay. that Legionnaire's disease is spread person to person. All right, and how about our water supply? Should people be concerned in any way about the water that's ha uh, affected in the South Bronx or any other parts of the city? So there's also the cases that occur either sporadic or mm -hmm. in outbreak conditions right. don't occur from drinking water. So there's no problem drinking water. All right. What do you get to tell those people who may have the symptoms of the cough, the fever, the headaches, the chills, and they may just think, oh, I just have a summer bug, and they ignore those symptoms. What do you have to tell to those people right now of what they should do in terms of seeking medical attention? Right, so yeah. I think at this point, what's important for the community to understand mm -hmm. is that their normal pattern of behavior where they go, that should not change at this point mm -hmm. until the health department uh, can identify a particular source that patients who develop Legionnaire's disease had contact with. All right. Uh, but, uh, Very quickly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, the question again, please? Yeah, no, you answered that question very well. We're going to have so much more from you coming up later. I know you're going to stick around because there's so many more questions that we want to address. Dr. Telzak, for now, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we have a link right on our website at news12.com with everything you need to know if you do develop symptoms of Legionnaires. And of course, stick with News 12 for continuing coverage on this story. 
as local as local news gets. News 12, The Bronx. Questions now swirling all across our area today about this Legionnaires outbreak. And right now we have answers to many of your questions about the bacteria. An infectious disease specialist came right here to our studios to kind of dispel those myths and give some specific details on how to fight it. News 12, the Bronx reporter Ray Raimondi spoke with this specialist this morning and, and Ray, he had a lot of helpful information for us, right? Uh, absolutely, Dave. Dr. Edward Telzak has been studying infectious disease for over 25 years. He's treating five patients with the disease right now. People here want to know, is this something to be worried about? Is this a systemic problem happening here? Well, I think mm -hmm. it's something to be concerned about, mm -hmm. certainly. Yeah. Uh, it's important to recognize, however, that Legionnaire's disease occurs all the time. From his mouth to your ears, Dr. Edward Telzak, who has studied infectious disease over two decades, voicing his concern over the outbreak of Legionnaire's disease in the South Bronx. 46 confirmed cases over the last 21 days, two deaths. As the search continues for the specific source, Dr. Telzak says Legionella is not uncommon. In fact, hospitals often test patients for Legionnaires if they arrive with symptoms of pneumonia. There are so many potential sources mm -hmm. that have water that could theoretically be a source of Legionnaires disease mm -hmm. that you can't really change your behavior. Okay. So I would say in these very hot days, everybody wants to be in an air-conditioned environment. That's right. Air conditioners can be a source of Legionnaires disease. That's right. And so you cannot really um, prevent exposure until the health department really figures out where the possible sources might be. And when health officials do locate the source, exactly how do they eliminate the contamination? Well, Dr. Telzak says going straight to the person who contracted it is key in helping to get rid of it. You have to speak to the people that have gotten sick, that have confirmed Legionnaire's disease, and do very detailed interviews about where they had been for approximately the 10 days prior to developing signs and symptoms of Legionnaire's disease. And once health officials find the source of Legionnaire's, Dr. Telzak says the decontamination process can be completed within just 48 hours, but it's all about locating exactly where it's coming from. It's what health officials are doing at this very moment. We will be following developments, Dave, throughout the day on this outbreak. We're gonna send it right back to you for now. All right, thanks so much for that update, Ray. Now we wanna hear from you. Head over to Facebook and leave us a comment by searching for News 12 The Bronx. You may even see your comment right here on the air.